Hello and welcome to Astronomy Spotlight for November. My name is Kirk Rosberg. I'm the Planetarium Coordinator here at the Hastings Museum. And first off, I hope you all got a chance to see the comet. Uh, this is, of course, Comet Chuchin Chan Atlas last month while it was still uh, visible with the, with the unaided eye. We had um, about 100 people show up at our viewing event. Uh, so thank you all for coming out. Uh, now, this month, though, you can catch Venus and the waxing crescent moon low, and I do mean low in the western sky, on November 4th. Venus is sort of hard to miss because it's like the brightest star-like object in the sky. Um, let me just turn on my planet labels, which also labels the moon. So we've got the crescent moon and the planet Venus in the west-southwest on on November 4th. If you miss Venus and the Moon, you can spot the waxing gibbous moon and yellowish Saturn very close together on November the 10th. And there they are. Very easy to see. Obviously, the Moon is very easy to find. Uh, Saturn, looking yellowish, will be right next to the waxing gibbous moon. And again, that is on November the 10th. November 16th through 19th will be a good opportunity to spot the closest planet to the sun, Mercury. It is frequently elusive in the sky because it is generally low in the sky, sometimes rather faint. Uh, frequently it sets right after sunset uh, or becomes visible right before sunrise. Right now, it is going to be low in the southwest right after sunset, but you should be able to see it within the twilight glow. The window of opportunity here is fairly short. Um, it is about 30 minutes. So Mercury will be at its highest uh, on the 16th through the 19th, uh, at least for the remainder of this year. As you can see, it is still uh, pretty low in the sky, and this is on the 17th of November. Also, on November 16th and 17th, you get a chance to see bright Jupiter. Uh, it'll be very near the waning gibbous moon on both nights. This is uh, showing the 16th, kind of in the eastern sky. Uh, this would be around 7.50. Uh, of course, that is Central Standard Time now. And this is the 17th of November. And speaking of the moon, this month's full moon on the 15th is another supermoon. So it might appear very slightly brighter and slightly larger, about 2 or 3% larger than uh, a non-supermoon, uh, which is to say you probably will not notice much uh, of any difference. And if you do, it is probably psychological. All right. Uh, one more thing, though, before we end the show, uh, a NOVA update. We've been talking about this NOVA since probably April, uh, expecting to see it probably by the end of September, and that hasn't happened yet. Uh, we are still waiting for the NOVA to explode in brightness. So when it does, of course, you will hear about it. It'll, it'll be up on social media. It'll probably be up on all the news websites and on the news in general. Uh, so stay tuned for that and keep your eyes peeled near the constellation of Corona Borealis, the Northern Crown. All right. Thank you all for watching and join me again next month for another edition of Astronomy Spotlight. And thank you for watching.